Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, welcome to the Warrior Partner in Education Appreciation Breakfast. Um, my name is Simona Sem. I'll be your MC. Um, I am a junior, soon to be senior, at the Academy of Global Studies at Wynwoods High School. So I just want to say thank you for being out here. Thank you for coming. And I know it's cold outside, so everyone made it safely. Thank you. Um, I just want to give you a little, back, a little bit of background for myself. Um, I'm from Ghana, and my family moved here when I was about five, and I've been in the U.S. ever since. I've been in the Wynwoods uh, District since first grade, and it's just been amazing. Thanks to you and everything that you guys do for the community and for our schools, and I, I just want to say, uh, say a personal thank you because, I, I mean, I see the impacts, I see the changes, I see our district moving towards in the right direction and our community moving towards in the right direction. So thank you so much for everything that you guys have contributed to and all the things that we have because of the things that you guys have done for us. Thank you so much. Just a round of applause for the whole group. Like, it's amazing, it's amazing. So. Um, we'll start off first with a presentation by Stella Sun. Um, Stella is a coordinator at our partner school in um, Shanghai, China. And she has brought some, um, some of the Chinese exchange students here to do some little performances for you and everything. But uh, we'd like to introduce her and welcome uh, Stella Sun. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Stella. I come from the IEUSA school uh, from Shanghai. First of all, I uh, want to say thank you for allowing me to stand here today and uh, let you know how much we appreciate uh, 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 for the opportunity to attend the Wittenwood High School. Um, we, uh, we have a very great exchange program between the IEUSA in Shanghai and Wittenwood in Cincinnati. It provides um, both the Chinese and American students with the perfect platform for opening their minds to different cultures and countries. Uh, as we all know, this is a quickly changing world, uh, so the awareness of uh, globalization is a very important key to success. And through this program, uh, our kids will be better prepared for a life in an increasingly globalized world. And we are also very eager to share our Chinese cultures and uh, traditions with American students and the families. We, um, we, we look forward to the day when more American students would take the advantage of coming to IEUSA in Shanghai. Um, now I would like to uh, make a brief introduction of our school and uh, the exchange program. It's a pity that the PPT cannot work here because uh, I've prepared many very nice pictures, um, but maybe next time when we have another chance. So I can just talk now. Our school, uh, IUSA in Shanghai, was established in 12, uh, 2012. It's affiliated to Fudan Secondary High School, which is uh, one of the top four senior high schools in Shanghai, which is really, really good. And our staff team consists of uh, experienced and professional teachers and administrators from different countries all over the world, including the United States, Canada, Australia, um, Europe, and of course China. And we are trying our best to design a curriculum which is perfectly in line with the Ohio State standards and the uh, HS uh, program at Winterwoods. And we are now also trying to be a um, uh, new tech network uh, a member school because we believe um, our kids would be better motivated through the uh, project-based learning methods. Um, our school also believes that all the kids are uh, equal individuals with uh, their own potentials. So we organize all kinds of after-school activities uh, allowing our kids to showcase their talents and to develop their potentials. Uh, we have our own school basketball team. We um, have cooking classes every week, teaching our kids how to cook different types of foods from different countries. We hold art competitions at least once a week. 
uh, we have a very, very big board at the back wall of each classroom and all the kids are encouraged to make their own designs under a specific theme. Uh, for example, autumn, the, if, the, if the theme is autumn, our kids would, would uh, make their designs with uh, like falling leaves or some withered flowers, the petals, things like that. They're very creative actually. And um, we, 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 uh, last week we had uh, self-defense classes for our girls. And it's, it's really, really interesting. And uh, I think all the teachers there were surprised to find that some girls are actually physically stronger than they look like. <laughs> and we, we celebrate both Chinese and the Western festivals. Um, it's a pity, actually. Uh, last week, uh, last year's Halloween parties, we, uh, uh, our kids showed their very stunningly creative Designs in the costumes and uh, makeup, and that's that's quite impressive. And last year's Christmas party, we uh, not only sang many uh, traditional Christmas songs in English, we also infused our Chinese elements in the party. Um, we had uh, four girls singing a very famous song from a famous Peking. <laughs> Opera. I, I don't know whether you have ever heard about the Peking Opera yet. It's quite difficult to, to sing a song from a, an opera, actually. Uh, I uh, actually four four girls who performed that song um, are coming to to Winterwoods, and I hope I hope uh, we will have the chance to 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 show to perform to all of you. Um, uh, last year. Our group, uh, the first group of IUSA came to uh, Winterwoods last year and they, uh, 16 out of the total 17 kids successfully obtained a uh, graduation diploma and now more than half of those kids have been enrolled by American colleges which is really good and this year we have 20 kids coming and uh, they are now um, feeling comfortable being with their host families, with great support and help with from from host families, and I really appreciate that. And they are now getting used to the new study life at Winterwoods, and they are making new friends with uh, local classmates, and they're doing pretty well. So uh, that's that's really really good. Um, uh, in exchange, our school in Shanghai uh, receives uh, receive, um, students, exchange students from Canada, the United States, and the UK regularly. I remember last year, a few students from Winterwoods visited Shanghai and studied at IUSA for a couple of weeks. In addition to regular classes um, at school with Shanghai uh, students, they also took uh, special classes about the Chinese language, the Chinese culture, and uh, some traditions. Uh, for example, um, now in a minute, uh, three kids of our this group are going to perform Tai Chi for, for you. And uh, Tai Chi is a very traditional uh, self-defense, I mean it's used to be a traditional self-defense self exercise, but now it's uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's famous as a graceful uh, exercise to, to improve people's health and, and it can benefit people's um, flexibility and balance of your body. So it's now performed, I mean practiced by many, many Chinese people of all ages now. And um, if, I mean, all the exchange students will have the chance to learn how to practice Tai Chi in Shanghai because, it's, uh, because all the students are supposed to learn that uh, at our PE class. So you will see um, in a minute. And um, we are very, very glad and uh, happy to be here. And we also welcome you to visit Shanghai and come to uh, IUSA. Thank you.
looking at that. That was, that was really cool. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like what they just did, like that was, that was oh, wow. That, that, that took me away. That, that was amazing. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Another round of applause. That was, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you. And it's, thank you so much, Stella. Um, it's, from a student's perspective, it's so amazing to be able to have this um, global interaction with different schools. Like, we have so many exchange students in our school district and in our building, and we're, we're constantly learning new things about them, about where they live, and it's, it's amazing to be able to get these global perspectives, these new ideas, and see things like that. You don't wake up and see that every morning now, do you? <laughs> not at all, not at all. Thank you so much. Um, speaking of actually being able to go to China, um, our uh, Wynwoods High School band will be taking a trip to China soon to do a performance and to see how everything's going and see what China is like and get the experience. And it's, it's amazing, it's amazing to be able to go to a high school and be able to say I took a trip to China, to be able to do all these things, and it's, it's wonderful. Just thank you so much, Stella. Thank you for the Tai Chi. Thank you. thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing everything with us. Thank you. Um, gosh, it's <laughs> it just takes me away. It's, it's so cool. Um, next, we have um, a performance by Nadina Imamovich, uh, and she's going to sing a song for us. I'm going to uh, help get Medina, but if you want to welcome her. Medina.
morning. Um, my name is Karina Denny, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for the district. And we just want to thank you so much for coming out this morning. I'm kind of kind of breaking in the middle of our program, but we want to make sure we recognize everyone in the room because it takes everyone to, uh, to help our community. So first of all, I'd like to recognize the board. Um, our Board of Education is here, Mr. Cleary and Ms. Burns. If you could stand. And I'm Steve Denny, I'm Director of Business Affairs for Wynwood City Schools, and I just want to thank you for being here this morning, and uh, it takes everyone to uh, achieve the kinds of uh, things we're trying to accomplish for our students. Of course, our goal is to pre prepare productive citizens, productive future employees for you and for uh, the edification and, and progress of our region, our city, our state, and of course, our great nation. So I'd also like to uh, continue to recognize folks for being here to acknowledge you and thank you for your partnership. Uh, we have representatives from the city of Forest Park and the village of Green Hills, if you please stand. Thank you for being here. We also have SHP Leading Design, an architectural firm, so we're glad you were able to make it today. We also have mentors that um, mentor our AGS freshmen, and it's a really critical um, piece of the AGS program, so we want to recognize you, you as well for all your hours that you dedicate to our students. There are also quite a few churches involved in our community, and there are several here this morning, including Forest, uh, Forest Chapel, McKelvey Baptist, and Latino Ministries of Southwest Ohio, if you'd please stand and be recognized. <laughs> One of our educational partners, High School to Work, is also present. We're glad. Thanks for coming. Siemens is right here in Forest Park, and uh, they handle a lot of different business for us, and, and we appreciate them a great deal. Also, at the high school. Thank you. <laughs> Millennium Business Systems uh, is our uh, MFP, a multifunction printer company, and they do a lot of other great things for us. So we appreciate your partnership, and thanks for being here. Wake Cross Community Media is also here, and we thank them for their partnership uh, with us. So thanks. And, and last but not, not least, as the Director of Business Affairs, I can tell you that schools are famous for asking for stuff. We do that a lot. So you know that. We come to you a lot and we ask, but we want you to know that partnerships are, are two ways. So if there's something we can do for you, we hope you never hesitate to ask us. And, and certainly my door is always open, and you're, you're welcome to call or email. And, we welcome that. So if there's something we can do for you, please be sure to reach out to us. And uh, thank you again for being here. Wow, that was just, that was just amazing. <laughs> I didn't know all the people that were here that, you know, support and do different things for the community. Like, wow, <laughs> there's a lot of groups here. I, like I said, I'm a student, so I,
don't know about, I didn't know about any, all of this. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. All the support, everything. Like, like, like we have Papa John's here. We, B-dubs. Places I go, I didn't even know. I, <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Like, all, all the support, everything. I, from a student's perspective, I just want to say that your time and your dedication and your support, it's, it's all going somewhere. And it's doing amazing things for our district and for our community. And it's just wonderful. It's, it's, it's amazing. You know, on behalf of the student body, I just want to say, you know, and I'm pretty sure everyone at the high school that's in class right now wants, thank you. Thank you so much. It means so much to know that our community and our school is able to come for this great partnership and do these things. Like, I'm kind of getting emotional here because I just didn't know. Like, it's. It's, it's beautiful. I, I, I love it. And thank you, Nadina. Thank you. For, <laughs> thank you for this exchange student, Stella, um, all the dancing. That's amazing. You know, because of the support that you guys provide the community, we're able to have and do these wonderful things. And these opportunities, it's times where we can take and we can, you know, show you exactly what we do because of all your time and dedication and just everything that you guys give to us. Thank you so much. Um, um, next, uh, we'll, oh, actually, I have one more thing to mention. Um, Nadina, uh, actually, you know how she introduced herself and she's from Bosnia. Well, uh, I was just informed that um, in Bosnia, she actually performed on a television, television show similar to The Voice that we have here, and she did wonderful, and it was amazing. So thank you so much again, Nadina. That's, that, that was beautiful. That, was beautiful. that song was lovely. <laughs> um, next, uh, we have our keynote address intro introduction, and um, I'd like you guys to help me introduce Mr. Anthony G. Smith. <laughs> Mr. Smith is the superintendent of Wentwood City School District. You read that? I know that. Okay. I wanted to make sure it was perfect. You know, it's just. Okay. <laughs> they warned me about this. <laughs> okay. An amazing man. I, I've had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of times. We did a lot of presentations and everything. I just want to say thank you to you. Thank you to everyone. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. This is, this is, I don't know. Okay. This is when the, this is when the program changes dramatically. All right. So I'm going to ask you a, a question. How many of you have ever met someone the first time you met them? <laughs> so your keynote speaker that's going to come up, I didn't like this guy at all. And uh, the feeling was mutual. Yes. <laughs> but now I now I love it. Now I love it. And, and let me tell you why I didn't like him. So here's a, his resume is very extensive, but I'm going to cut to the chase and get to the main parts. We were at a I was a uh, principal at Cincinnati Public and. We came to a meeting with the uh, business leaders about how to partner with schools and make schools better places so that partnership and businesses could work together seamlessly. And there was one seat available. And of course, the seat was next to him. And he asked me who I was, told him who I was. He asked me the name of my school, I gave him the name of my school. And he says, did you know, now this is the first time I met him, did you know that you have the worst school in the city. It's in the state. No. <laughs> that was the second comment. You still have the worst school in the state. And so um, he is a he he takes breaks often because uh, me and his wife keep working on him trying to stop smoking, and he won't listen to her. He won't listen to me. So I've stopped trying. She's still working on it. And so he said. After he humiliated me and told me I had the worst school in the state, he then said, would you like to step outside? And I said, okay, now we're about to do something. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm walking outside and he says, I'm willing to help you if you're sincere about making your school different. Now he just humiliated me, now he wants to help me. <laughs> so I thought about it and I said, okay, come to my school tomorrow at 8 o'clock. He was there at 8 o'clock. And we made some miraculous uh, inquiries, discoveries. Uh, we made sure that everything that we said we were going to do for children, we did. 
And so, uh, without any further ado, Mr. Jack Campson. Well, thank you for that wonderful introduction, Mr. Smith. <laughs> thing is, there's not a male human being on the planet I love more than this guy. Nah. <laughs> I got a big mouth. <laughs> now, Anthony uh, is probably the only human being on the planet that could A, get me out of bed this early in the morning, B, have me put a suit on. I had to blow the dust off this sucker. It's been two years since my retirement. I don't wear suits very often. And, uh, and, and C, I uh, have to think about something that I was going to do that day. And uh, he's, uh, he's, he's the greatest. He's the only guy on the planet that, that could get me to do this, but I'm happy to do it. Because I walk in the door, and what do you hear? You hear an ensemble with the singer. Okay. And how often do you get to do that? You guys were, were great. Is that personality infectious or what? <laughs> <laughs> you meet a lady from China. Where, where, where is she? Where'd she go? There she is. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, well, wait a minute, this is Wynn Woods. I read all about y'all in the inquiry. This can't be Wynn Woods. Somebody from China's here and the, the beautiful dance. Now, do they call that Tai Chi? Tai Chi, right? Not not dance, more exercise. Yeah. For me, that's fast dancing. <laughs> <laughs> we we go to weddings, and my wife wants to dance. I give her one slow dance. <laughs> that's it. I got a case of terminal cool. You know, it's <laughs> it's about as good as it gets. And then you hear the beautiful voice of someone who's traveled from halfway around the world and in, in, in Bosnia and with everything that we know about the history of Bosnia and all the struggles and, and, and the issues that they've had and what they've been able to overcome and you meet somebody as beautiful as this with such a beautiful voice. I mean, what a great place. So Anthony, I really appreciate it so far. Um, I'd like to tell you that my introduction part will, will be longer than my actual speech, but Anthony said I got 20 minutes, and I said, you know me, Anthony, I can't even say my name in 20 minutes. It's going to take me a long time, because this is a, a subject that I'm incredibly passionate about. By the way, I asked him, where is it? And he said, well, it's at the uh, it's at the Forest Park Senior Center. And I said, well, how appropriate that it would be at your estate. <laughs> This is, Wenton Woods gives you like the governor, the Ohio gives the governor a mansion, they give you a, a place here at the senior center. <laughs> That's pretty appropriate, man. Well, he's got more hair and it's a lot less rare. So, uh, I think when, when we talk about uh, education, we think really about any problem that's in front of us. <clears throat> what I like to think about, because I'm, I'm not the sharp school to shed, I didn't graduate from college till about four or five months ago, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> I got my honorary PhD from an academic institution about four years before I got my actual degree. After I retired from Bell, I did go back and, and finish the degree requirements. So I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I can't give you the logarithmic equation for success. I don't, I don't know that it exists. If it does, I don't have it. Okay. So I try to break things down into simple types of things that even I can handle. Okay. And when I look at any problem, I think there's two components to the problem. Okay. There's the why and there's the how. The why and the how. And most people get confused that the most important thing is the how. And they lose sight of the why. Unless you can accurately define why you're going to do something. The how you're going to do it becomes very difficult. And in a short period of 20 minutes, I might uh, I may say some things here that you may believe are politically incorrect. If you do, come and see me because I want to fully explain it to you. But to, in 20 minutes, I can't get there. But to, to me, this is a very important part. We in America love the topic of diversity, don't we? Okay, I mean, it's all we talk about. 
Okay. Here's a black guy and here's a white guy. And we're diverse, right? Okay. And here's a female, Asian female, and here's a white guy. And we're diverse, right? Okay. Here's a very trim, uh, fit individual, and here's a very overweight, balding old guy. And, but we're diverse, right? The shallowness of the average American's description of what constitutes diversity, in my mind, is mind boggling. Because let me ask you this Did you have any part to play or any choice to make in the fact that you're a female? Did you have any part to play in the fact that you're a black man? Did you have any part to play that you're a female? Did you have any part to play in, in terms of where you were born? At the end of the day, we're all accidents of birth. You have your parents to thank and your DNA to thank for who you are in terms of your physical appearance. True or not true? Sure. Okay. Yet here we are. Oh, kiss me, I'm Irish. <laughs> the Irish bullshit. <laughs> what part of the island are you from? Uh, well, um, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, everybody's got this nationality thing, this race thing, and and and, and the uh, and the gender thing going on, and we all like defend this to the to the to the absolute team. And some point over time, I have to believe that the world really won't care what you look like. When we think about true diversity, what is it that really makes people diverse? Their, 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 their differences, by definition, diversity would say their differences. Okay? But is it their physical appearance that makes you really diverse? Isn't it more important about how we think? What did Martin Luther King say in his famous speech? I want to be judged by the content of my character, not the color of my skin. Yet races of both sides want to be judged because I'm black or I'm white. Both sides of the aisle forget about the fact that what constitutes true diversity is the content of our character. Okay, or how we think. That's what constitutes true diversity. The rest is cosmetic, which frankly, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, you didn't have anything to do with. You were an accident of birth. Okay? Now that I've pissed everybody off, <laughs> I'm going to move on to the year of our Lord, 1776. There were two very important uh, documents that were written in the year 1776. What were they? The Declaration of Independence, you got the first one. I'll give anybody in the room a hundred bucks if you can tell me what other unbelievably important document was published in the year of our Lord, 1776. It was a book by a not-so-famous Scottish economist. Does that help you? His name was Adam Smith. He wrote the book, The Wealth of Nations. Anybody here ever heard of it? I got a nephew that graduated from, uh, from uh, what's the big time business school in Chicago? Uh, no, no, that's Pennsylvania. Uh, I forget. Anyway, there's a big time business school in Chicago. <laughs> And, and I asked him, have you ever read the book, The Wealth of Nations, or heard about this guy, Adam Smith? And he said, no. So he got all the way through college and then all the way through MBA school, never heard of Adam, Adam Smith and The Wealth of Nations. Can anybody tell me what the principle of Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations is? Anybody tell me what that is? Well, it's kind of sad because in this room, we're all capitalists. True or not true? Who in here is not a capitalist? Who in here is a capitalist? <laughs> You're brave. <laughs> okay. So the lady sitting next to the lady says she isn't. You say you're a capitalist, right? What's the definition of a capitalist? We need to be responsible for your own. 
someone who's responsible for you. So you're not. What's what? What definition do you use by which you say I'm not a Catholic? Well, in deference to the board, I'll, I'll just keep that. No, 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 no. <laughs> See, in order to make this interesting, I need to have someone like you that says, <laughs> I asked this, I lecture, I just gave a lecture at the, the Ohio State University. <coughs> and kids who have, whose parents have just spent roughly $150,000 on their education and have taken the theory of uh, economics as part of their business school education can't tell me what the definition of capitalist is. Free enterprise. Making money. I think that the definition of capitalist, now remember I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, I generate everything down into something I can understand. The definition of capitalist is somebody who wants a return on their investment. Good morning. So, that doesn't necessarily have to do with money. So, are, do you, uh, now we're going to get personal. Do you have a boyfriend? You, oh, you have a husband. <laughs> yeah, but do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> you have a husband. How long have you been married? Uh, 15 years. 15 years. 35 for me. Okay. Um, during that period of time, did you love him? Do you care for him? Yes. Do you do things you wouldn't do for him that you wouldn't do for yourself? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> now let's say all he wanted to do is sit on the couch, drink beer, and watch football. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sounds a little too knowledgeable. <laughs> okay. Do you want a return on your investment with him? Do you want him to, to love you back? to care for you. <laughs> As human beings, we all want this. Only Mother Teresa okay, was willing to go out and, 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 and make investments in people and expect nothing for it. But she got a higher reward from a different place. Okay? A capitalist is somebody who wants a return on their investment. And Adam Smith was the, book, the guy that wrote the book. And if you read through the 8 billion pages of the book, pardon me? Ah, yes. The two concepts of Adam Smith's theory was that capitalism is the redistribution of wealth guided by an invisible hand. What does that mean, the redistribution of wealth? You got $100, you give me 50 I don't have any. No, we're not talking tax. <laughs> we're not talking the federal government. That's a whole different issue. <laughs> the redistribution of wealth means that if I have $100, I'm going to spend it. Okay? I'm going to make an investment that I want to return on. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to spend it on something. Okay? And that something that I buy has to be made by someone like you or someone like you, and you get paid for that, and what happens? You take $100 and you spend it, okay? So in a very sort of nice world, the idea is, is that with money, you spend money, and when you spend money, you spend it with, uh, uh, with by procuring goods and services that other people provide, so they get money and they spend money, okay? Guided by an invisible hand which I'm not politically correct to talk about in terms of spirituality, but my personal belief that there is an invisible hand inherent in all of us, okay, that at some point there's a fairness level. Where the invisible hand touched me in terms of capitalism was to say that with, without education, People have no chance at participating in their return on investment. Zero chance. Hopefully, not many people in this country starve. They don't, most people have a place to go. 
Okay, they have a warm roof over their head. <clears throat> Most of the people in this country uh, who are in poverty are far beyond uh, many middle class people in, in other countries. So great, we can all feel good about that. But what they lack by being undereducated is the chance that we've formerly called the American dream. I'm a product of the American dream. My old man worked for the government. He had nine kids. When I was 17 years old, my rear end got booted out of the house, and the guy said, see ya. Okay? I went to, when I was 25 years old, I was working in a gas station, back when people used to work in gas stations. <laughs> now it's just credit card. Okay? I was working in a gas station. <clears throat> then I met this woman, and I asked her if she'd marry me. And she said, uh, sorry, dude. I never really saw myself being married to somebody who's 25 years old working in a gas station. <coughs> you know, if you go back to school, nice, then maybe I'll consider it, which I did, and we got married. That was 35 years ago. I joined GE. I saw the world. I ran Erickson of Sweden in North America. I worked for Rogers Cantel. I came to Cincinnati about 19 years ago, and blah, blah, blah. I was a product of the American dream, that if you worked hard enough on the right things, you, in, in fact, could participate in this thing we call capitalism, okay? And I've been paid a lot of money. Thankfully, most of you have uh, forgotten the stuff you read in the newspaper about me. <laughs> we all know CEOs are a bunch of overpaid folks who make no investment back into society. Okay? That, that part of the American dream was in part due to the fact that I did pursue an education. And back in my day, you could go work for GE and not have a college degree. You can't do that in today's world. Can you, can, you, can you work for Proctor without a college degree? Yes. Today? Huh? You, 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 you're lucky to get in the door, and if you do, you're not going to go very far. Okay? So that education is unbelievably important. Okay? Now I'm going to go back to diversity, and I'm going to tie it up. And uh, <clears throat> if you want to, you can ask a few questions. So. When I sat down next to Mr. Smith on that fateful day, what he fails to tell you is, is that it was at the Chamber of Commerce, and they ranked all the schools. And Taft High School was, in fact, ranked the worst high school in the city and, in fact, in the state. And frankly, as a taxpayer, I was indignant with the fact that my taxes were going to a place that that year would graduate 18 kids. And by the way, the only requirement for graduation was a pulse. Anybody that was a senior that was there, <clears throat> you, got, you got the pass. But they weren't going to test you back then. It was, what, 15, 16 years ago? They were just happy that you made it through four years. It was a freaking miracle that you made it through four years at Taft High School. And so you got the degree, and we gra and they graduated 18 of them, okay? I went the next day, and I became more indignant with the fact that my tax dollars had gone for maybe the worst slum school I had ever seen in my life. This place was terrible. And so I asked Anthony when we went out for that smoke break, <coughs> <laughs> He claims that he wasn't smoking, but no. <laughs> so I, 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 you know, I'm like all up in his grill. I'm like, dude, how can, how could that happen? And, and look at him. He, you know, he wears some reality suits. You know, he's, he's a smiling guy. He's well educated. Finally, he looks at me. He says, man, I've been here exactly seven weeks. And I said, oh shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. So why is a guy like you, why do you want to be at that school? He says, that's what they need. And that's when I said, if you are serious about changing this situation, I'm serious about trying to help you. So let's look at diversity. Is he black and I'm white? Yeah. Does that mean anything? Didn't mean anything to me, the fact that he was black and I was white. Okay? Um, 
it didn't mean anything to me the fact that we were both male. It didn't mean anything to me the fact that you know he could obviously play basketball in the NBA and I'm and I'm, I'm a short guy. <laughs> okay. It didn't mean anything to me what he looked like. What meant something to me is, what do you want to do? Where can the diversity of thought help us? He was the principal of that high school. Do I really think, as the CEO of a major company, that I knew the square root of squat about curriculum and educating people? No. I told them they won. I don't have anything to do with your curriculum. I don't want to have anything to do with your study hall periods. I don't want to have anything to do with the timing of what you do and when you do it. What I want to have something to do with is what are the results that you're planning to do. In other words, the why. Why are you going to do what you're going to do? Then we're going to talk about the how it is that we can do it together. Principal of a high school does not have the background that someone skilled in business, or at least I claim to be skilled in business, a CEO would have, okay, or participation in the community. I didn't have the principal of the high school. So the diversity of our backgrounds and of our thought came together to say, okay, Anthony, you work on your thing, you tell me what it is you want me to do over here. And as long as we're measuring and pushing for increased uh, results and excellence, I'm in. And then my employees got it. And then the community got it. And we took the worst performing high school, we took the worst performing high school in the city. We now graduate 99% of the kids. More than half of those kids go on to college. They've been a Blue Ribbon school for the last four or five years. I was contacted by your uh, school district uh, when you were hiring Mr. Smith and asked uh, you know, if I thought he'd make a pretty good uh, uh, administrator and, 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 and head, of, head of, the, uh, of, the, of the district. And I said, absolutely. Okay. This is a guy who uh, puts rubber on the road. This is a guy who does what he says he's going to do. Never ever once have I ever had an issue with Mr. Smith, in fact, in, in, in terms of what we were measuring and what the results were. Okay. So, again, I think that's probably like the amount of time that I have. I'm trying to boil down 20 years of, of a lot of things in, into a little bit. But I would tell you that there are people in this room who are heavily involved, there are people in this room who are not involved. There are people in this room who are sort of kind of involved. Okay. Um, what you can do is based on what your nature and your situation is and all the environment around the things around you. Um, <clears throat> I was the CEO of one of Cincinnati's largest companies. Is that mine? <laughs> How rude! <laughs> Nice to be one. Of these. <laughs> I turn up the volume full blast now because after I retired, you know, everybody used to call me, now nobody called me. <laughs> um, where the heck was I? Uh, the, 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 um, the, the key, I think, is to recognize that this mission of educating and helping young people without it, these young people have no chance. None. Zero. In America, they're not going to starve to death, okay? And, and, and they're not going to die in, in the sun. But will that help them realize what the promise that they have? And who's to say that one of these kids is not going to find a cure for cancer? Who's to say that one of these kids is not going to be a world leader? Who's to say that a lot of things aren't? In America, we believe that if we throw enough money at the problem, it'll go away. True or not true? Really true. Otherwise, how can you explain the tax system? I know. Work all your life, take half of what you earn, give it to the government, and let them spend it, because God knows they're a lot smarter than we are. <laughs> yeah. 
both sides of the aisle, none of them make it in my book. Okay. Throwing money at the issue will not solve the issue. It is counterintuitive to believe, but the fact is, is that human beings get educated one human at a time. One human at a time. There was a survey done of 100 millionaires in America. And they asked the question, did you go to private school or did you go to public school? Where do you think the percentages ended up? Half and half, private, public. They actually ended up half and half, which tells you that this whole idea of, of, uh, of some people have an unfair advantage in start, it's garbage. It's, all, it's only done by people who want to bait you into their agenda. So if it wasn't education and where it happened, the fact is they were educated, but public or private, it didn't matter. But if it wasn't education, what was the one thing that mattered? Family. 100% of the millionaires, and I'm not saying being a millionaire is what everybody should aspire to, but it's just one judge of accomplishment, okay? 100% of the millionaires said that somewhere in their life there was at least one person, one person who made them feel that they were special and that they could do what was being asked of them. 100% of them, and it wasn't always family, it wasn't always friends. It wasn't always acquaintances. But there was one person, teacher, whatever, who believed in that person. <clears throat> what we found out at Taft High School in Cincinnati Bells by our mentoring and, and, uh, and um, tutoring program is, is that with the lack of other support groups, that these mentors and these tutors became that one person, one person who required that individual to think differently about where they were going and how they were going to get there. One person, that mentor, that tutor, became the surrogate for someone who actually cared. When you think about the fact that you can't throw enough money at this education problem, and that it is one child at a time, and one person can make a difference in that, in, in that child's life, and from my perspective, you know, you got to jump in, okay? If everybody just do what they can do, be a lot better place. But I think I'm preaching to the choir. I've heard all about y'all and, and, and how much Anthony respects and appreciates everything that you do. Uh, I just wish that we could grab the 8 million heathens that don't get the, uh, <laughs> the message out there and, uh, and, and, and talk with those folks. But, you know, you're doing good. We can do better. You've got the right leadership here to be able to really knock it out of the park and take it to a different place. And uh, I very much appreciate the fact that you want to be bored out of your mind and have someone else come to talk to you. So, uh, any questions? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, Taft High School, 15 years ago, what was the approximate turnaround that you saw things really start to go up? Took a, took a long time. Took. You know, Taft High School didn't have a football team. And the reason they didn't have football, they hadn't had a football team in three years. And they hadn't scored a touchdown in five years. Does that tell you why they didn't have a football team? You know, you put enough young kids in a situation where they can't be any good, and, and, and sooner or later they're, they're taking off. By the way, one thing Mr. Smith always told me I thought was important was, that these kids have grown up being lied to all their life. They've been lied to by their parents. They've been lied to by the cops. They've been lied to by the politicians. They've been lied to by the teachers. The one thing we will not do under any circumstance is not deliver and continue to lie to a kid. Okay. So we brought uh, we, we brought Mike Martin, Anthony, and I. Uh, uh, Mike used to play wide receiver for the Bengals. He grew up in a really bad part of Washington, D.C. His heart was, was there. He came in and ran a great program. And uh, this year, anybody watch the national championship game? Yeah. Number 92, Adolphus Washington. I mentored that kid at Taft High School. Okay. Number 85 for the, uh, for the Oregon Ducks. 
D. Wayne Stanford, a.k.a. Too Tall. Okay? That kid played for Anthony Smith. Adolphus played for Anthony Smith. He got two kids in the national championship team. This isn't St. Action Colbrand we're talking about. We're talking about Taft High School. So little by little, whether it was through sports, the orchestra, the band, the cheerleading squad, the academics, Anthony had to take some time to figure out who the right teachers were and really had their hearts in it. I would say it took a minimum of five years before we even saw anything different in the grades, okay? And then it took another five years to get to a very high quality, and then lately it's been over the charts. But you have to build the process. You know, you, you're being the CEO of a company. Yeah. You're looking at the way things are here and what it looks. Yeah. You have a levy that's coming up and trying to tell people that you need to vote for this levy. Yeah. You being a CEO, people aren't going to buy that, are they? Why wouldn't they? Because they think that the way the scores are now, yeah. are probably not similar to what they are in TAP, but lower. They're looking at nothing's really quiet. Why should I spend all this my, my tax money to make a better place there? Because they're not doing any good anyway. The interesting thing is when I talk to uh, when I talk to the bros in my hood, <laughs> Indian Hill. <laughs> okay. What do you need all that money for? You're already at a high level. You need the money to develop. You need the money to get someplace. Okay? Once you've achieved it, really, do you need all that much money? They don't like that message. Okay? Um, look, you're going to ask people to part with some of their hard-earned dollars. Okay? And the United States government roughly takes about 83% of every dollar they make already in all forms of taxation, okay? You're not the only hog at the trough. There's a lot of people looking to get in the wallet of those people. So you better have a message. And I don't know what, you know, I, I can tell you that your Newton Woods is better now than they were some time ago. I'm telling you they got a great future. I'm telling you they got the right leadership. Okay. I'm telling you they got the right board. All right. But you're, if, if you can't run out of gas in the middle of the journey, you got to figure out a way to market that. And I, I wouldn't think it'd be all that difficult. Look, one of my favorite expressions is you can't fix stupid. You literally cannot fix stupid. Okay. If someone is stupid enough to say, how's that for politically? <laughs> Call it like it. If someone's stupid enough to say, I'm not going to give my school district any money because their grades are bad, don't even argue with that person. Appeal to the people who can think, okay, and go after those folks. We need to continue our investment. I'll tell you what, if all of the, uh, the, the citizens read, uh, uh, in, in what woods was at this meeting and heard what we heard this morning? Done deal. I totally agree. Right? So you got to get out. You got to sell the message. Just me. I got a couple questions. So you talked about the fact that there it took five years to kind of start to see some changes, the needle moving. Did you have an idea at the beginning how long it would take before you started to see some progress? I I, I didn't know. I was CEO of a phone company. I, I don't know, okay? I imagine that these kids didn't get to where they were overnight and that it would take a long time and a lot of effort to get them to, 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 to a different place. So I, I never, you know, again, I go in with the, with the why and the how, and I don't really go in with the how long. Right? The, the, the answer is whatever it takes. We're here for the duration. We're not here to give you book bags and pencils and, you know, stuff that has no effect on a kid, okay? Just so I can, what, see my brand name on a book bag? No. <clears throat> We're there to make real change. So my second question is, since you said you and Mr. Smith had such an affection for one another the first day that you met, 
Um, how did you come together, the meeting of the minds, when you had such a diversity of thought in determining what to do, and especially in the prioritization of what comes first and second? Yeah, to me that was easy. Okay, uh, and and our, our our he likes to oversell. Okay, our our moment of uh, stress was short lived because I really. Once he told me he'd been there for seven weeks, I didn't lay it on him, okay? So we, we got over that pretty quick. The question is, how long did it take us to figure out what, what the order of events were? And, and this is why it's so important to understand the true value of diversity, okay? I understand that I am not a teacher. I'm not a principal. I'm deferring all that to him. Now, if he screws it up, I'm out of here. Okay? And he only have one chance. Because I go find somebody that keep one, not going to screw it up. And he understood, okay, that when it came to getting resources and people and help and, and, and other things, we that, that, that school, that you know, they were seriously, uh, CPS was going to knock that school down and close it. They were looking for an excuse, and we screwed them up. Okay. And what we did the first summer is we brought uh, more broadband and computer equipment into that school than, than, than uh, Indian Hill or St. X or any of the so-called more wealthy schools. Okay. We began to give the student and the parents a reason to believe with something physical that things were changing. We, uh, <clears throat> we told them to kick out a three, point, uh, three grade point out and maintain it, we were going to give them a free cell phone from Cincinnati Bell, as long as they maintain the 3.3 .3 grade point average and a laptop computer and high-speed broadband into their homes. Because they had high-speed at school, but when they went home, they didn't have it. Okay? Once they saw the physical representation that things were real, okay, then they got on board. What was the ROI? So uh, once this thing achieved some amount of notoriety, it was hard to keep under the covers. Did you had an IM lawyer on ABC News or whatever, she on CBS, or we were on CBS, we were on ABC, and all the newspapers had it on. I, I was at a board of directors meeting once, and they asked me, they said, this is really, 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 really good. What's in it for us? Because as a publicly traded corporation, you all think that we're, we're evil folks, okay, because we're in it for what's in it for us. But by law, we're in it for the value of the shareholder. We, I don't get to spend money on stuff that I think would be interesting or benevolent, okay? I don't get to do that by law. And some of you own shares of stock in companies, okay? Some of you invest in some companies because you like what they do on a benevolent standpoint. But there is absolutely many people who say, I don't want you spending my money on what you think is, 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 is your calling on, okay? So the board of directors said, okay, what's in it for us? And I said, there's two things there in it for us. I said, in my mind, as a CEO, I only think about customers, and employees. Because if you take care of customers and employees, the shareholder will be taken care of. Customers and employees. And when I look at the area and over the run around Taft High School, I see neither customers nor employees. You should think, as I think about this, as a market development opportunity. I'm developing future employees and I'm developing future customers. And they said, okay. This is the invisible hand of capitalism, okay? Customers and employees make investment, develop the market, develop the opportunity. That's what was in it for us. You welcome. Any questions? Well, uh, thanks so much. I really enjoyed it. And you were not allowed to use the word amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Any other 17-year-old's way of saying, dude, you blew me away, dog. <laughs>
what words do I use? <laughs> oh my. Don't do it. It was powerful. It was powerful. Thank you.